All right, Daniel, thank you so much for joining me on the Top Agent Podcast. Really excited for you to be here. My pleasure. Awesome. So um, this is a new series we're doing uh, during this crisis that we're all living through, uh, where I'm speaking to successful realtors like yourself and uh, just talk about how realtors are dealing with this pandemic, um, how you're staying productive, keeping busy, and where you think real estate is heading moving forward. Um, but very quickly though, Daniel, do you mind telling us just a bit about yourself and your background? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I can start off. Um, I, uh, I come from a real estate family, so my parents have been in the business for basically my entire life. Um, my mom's been in it for about 30 years. My dad's been in, it and then she's a residential um, sales rep. And then my dad's been in it for uh, 35 years and he's a commercial sales rep who originally uh, worked in commercial real estate for Hyundai. Um, so, so I've kind of been exposed to things um, for my entire life. And, uh, you know, growing up, I was a, as a teenager, I didn't want anything to do with what my parents did. Um, and then progressively kind of was a little bit more, grew, grew to be a little bit more mindful about, you know, how much value they had been able to bring to my life and what a good relationship I had with my parents. And, and I, uh, you know, as I matured a little bit, I, I wanted to start getting into it. Uh, and so I, I pursued an undergrad in, um, uh, I did a Bachelor of Commerce in Real Estate at the University of Guelph, and then did a postgrad um, at the University of British Columbia, uh, postgrad certificate in um, property valuation. So, um, and then I just, uh, I did a lot of placements with uh, commercial shops, uh, institutions, Etc. In um, in Toronto, um, but I really liked the, the world of commercial real estate. But I, I didn't really. Um, I was uh, probably not disciplined enough to be to be in the downtown environment. So I, I felt it was the best bet for me to um, to move up and work with the family business um, economically as well. Um, so I've been doing that for um, five years now, um, and I sort of. I'm sort of in between my parents. So like I'll do, you know, let's say I, I would do about as much commercial um, and residential property. Um, it would be pretty equal. And, and, and I think that, you know, that's kind of in, in Toronto now or in the GTA, especially you're seeing, you know, there's so much foreign capital investing in, in housing. So like I still get to, to work with a lot of the investor types of people, um, even if it's a residential product. Perfect. That's awesome. Thanks so much for sharing that. No um, so specifically like what we're going through right now, like these are truly unprecedented times, like no matter how you look yeah, at it, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no one has ever come close to experiencing something like this. Um, and it's impact both like health wise and economically. Um, yeah. So we're about like where we are in Ontario, uh, about two weeks into this now, I guess. Um, so from a real estate perspective, this all happened in what was gearing up to be uh, probably one of the hottest real estate markets Toronto and the GTA has ever seen. Um, yeah. So how have you been coping with all of this? Well, I, I, I sort of had an inkling that this was going to happen um, in, let's say like January. I, I noticed things started getting out of hand um, in, in the Wuhan region. And I, I'm a little bit of, you know, kind of, kind of paranoid to be honest, just by character, by my nature. Um, so I was reading a lot about that uh, and uh, um, I was like one of the early contributors to the, to the coronavirus um, subreddit uh, on Reddit. And, um, and so that kind of got me, let's say that got me started. And, and I remember communicating a lot of this to my clients and a lot of people were just like, Oh yeah, it's not going to be a big deal and, and whatever. And, and I said, I, I get the feeling it's probably going to be a pretty big deal. But, but anyway, so, so a lot of this is then um, I even have like there's podcasts that I was doing, um, you know, maybe a month and a half, two months ago, um, talking about this stuff with people and people, you know, like even guys were telling me that I needed to take my tinfoil hat off and stuff like that. So, um, I, for me, it's, it's, I mean, kind of in a unique position because this has made me look good kind of right. Uh, like a lot of, a lot of my, my clients are, are grateful that I kind of saw this coming in and I wasn't really pushing anyone to get caught up in the, in the FOMO of this spring market. Um, because I did really feel like it was going to come to an end. Um, I, I don't, I don't know if we'll see a decline in price. I think that, um, but, but I, I think that volumes obviously come to a grinding halt already. Um, and you know, that's, that's quantifiable. I think the big question becomes, how's it going to, um, how's it going to translate to price? And, um, 
I really have no clue, honestly. Um, so th I think that the big part is, you know, dealing with this right now means in a lot of cases, accepting the uncertainty and doing the best that you can to, to mitigate the risk of, of dealing with that uncertainty for yourself and your clients. Totally. Yeah. Uh, I'm sort of like yourself. I've been reading about this since January. Um, so kind of saw it coming as well, but, um, so, you know, like thousands of other small businesses, business owners out there right now, like, you know, you're obviously yeah. fighting through this, um, you're doing what you can to, to come out of this even stronger, of course. Um, mm -hmm. So work wise, I'm sure your day to day has changed pretty drastically. Um, the real estate, it's usually a very personal business, right? So it yeah. isn't really the case right now. So right. what, what are your days looking like right now? Like, how are you staying busy and staying productive? Um, I still do a lot of prospecting. I mean, to be honest with you, this is kind of, a lot of my buddies have been, you know, kind of poking fun at me because I, I was always the guy who never wanted to take meetings. Like I, it was kind of only on absolute necessity that I would leave the house. I just, I, I like to work from home. Um, you know, I have a, a beautiful partner and, and daughter here that I like to just hang out with. And, uh, and so, and I like to be around them and be able to just go up and uh, have the liberty to do that. Um, and so, and I was kind of laughing back at them saying, you know, oh, I guess we're about to find out how many, um, how many of those meetings could have been phone calls. Right. Um, so for me, it's like, I feel like I, I honestly really feel like I'm in my element and I'm, and I'm kind of grateful for the change. Obviously it comes with a lot of consequences, uh, you know, with, you know, the, the, the health issues and econ huge economic, um, consequences as a result of this, but I, I feel uniquely equipped for, um, for this market. So uh, my typical day before and after has, hasn't really changed. I just, typically I would leave the house for appointments in the afternoon and now I'm not doing that. Um, so I wake up at about five, just before five o'clock I go for, I now go for a walk, which I used to go play squash with my squash partner, come home. I record a bunch of content, um, on my Instagram feed. So everybody sees it when they wake up. Um, and, uh, I just, I just talk about three things that I think are important, um, to be aware of in the market. Uh, and then, uh, I, I lift weights. Um, I have break, make breakfast and, and have breakfast with my family. And then I come downstairs and I start, uh, I start cold calling. Um, I've been a little bit reluctant to call some of the, the people that I would have been prospecting for in the past, just cause I don't really want to bother too, too many people. And, and I don't really want to be like an ambulance chaser in this whole you know, lockdown scenario. Um, so I've been, I've been contacting a lot more of the development clients who I know, you know, a lot of whom are working from home and are still opportunistic and, and wanting to be kind of out there on the purchase side and, and just want to want to talk about the market a little bit to people. So, um, you know, just been, been working a lot of those relationships. Um, so I'll do that from, let's say, tw you know, nine to, to noon. Um, I try not to get too distracted with the stock market, but, uh, I mean, I've been, been playing in that dabbling in that just with, with some of the free time and, and cash to try and build a little bit of a hedge, um, in case the market does go South. Um, and, and yeah, and then I just kind of hang out and spend as much time with my family as I can right now. I'm really trying to, to capitalize on the fact that we're, we're all home. Right. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So, so you're, you're I guess your day to day from a, like a real estate perspective side hasn't changed much. Like you've always been, um, you know, working remote right. for the most part. Um, so do you, are you mostly in commercial real estate then from what I gather? No, I would do, I, I still do sell a lot of, uh, of residential investment product. Um, but, uh, a lot of the, the commercial clientele are the ones that really, you know, demand more, um, relationship building so they're the ones you're calling more anyway right with, with residential like you build your relationships when you're out there showing properties in a lot of cases and, and that typically sufficient um but on the commercial side of things it's a lot more information gathering and information sharing and and so those things you know you kind of have to account for the, the the difference in amount of time consumed for that but but the whole like the residential piece is the showing piece is sort of grinded to a halt i mean mostly because it it it's interpreted as socially irresponsible to be out doing a lot of these showings right now. Right. Um, yeah. and, and I, I think there's some merit to that. So. Yeah, totally agree. Um, so you mentioned cold calling. So that's, that's yeah. interesting. Um, a few people I'm or realtors I, I'm speaking with and just other business in general, sort of putting a yeah. halt to cold calling, just sort of like being, you know, 
yeah. insensitive at the moment? Like, how, what's your feedback with that with people you're you're reaching out to? Yeah, it it, it varies. Like, um, you know, I I call so like the 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 type of product that I found really um, reflects positively on on my style is um, you know people with residential properties in in a secondary planned area in in a small town. So you know, in, in our trade area, which is Georgina, it would be, you know, anything on the main streets there. People who, a lot of these people have owned the houses for 25, 30 years. They're kind of fed up with the amount of traffic going by, et cetera. Um, and so a lot of these people, like when I'm talking to them, they want to know, a lot of people want to have the conversation that you and I are having right now. And they want to hear it from somebody who, who knows what they're talking about. Um, you know, not just another realtor who showed up at their door with a card asking if they want to sell their house. So I found that just, and I, and I, this is, has always been my perspective when I'm training agents, even it's like, you know, people who are afraid to cold call, they're probably calling for the wrong reasons. Right. So for, for me, it's like, I just, I, I pick up the phone with the objective of adding value to that person's life. And if, if I'm able to do that, that's great. And if, if I'm not, they're most likely going to tell me pretty quickly. Um, and so I found myself lately that the way things have changed is, I mean, nobody's saying, yeah, you know, what can you get me for my property? Cause I do a lot of off market transactions. Like I would say greater than 50% of my deals. Um, but um, a lot of people, so they're not saying, oh, you know, you, could you get me an offer? What can you get me for my place? They're saying, what the hell's going on in the market right now? You know, what, what, what do you expect? Are prices going to fall? Like, should I be dumping my property? You know, what's going to happen as a result of this? Um, and, and so being, being equipped, I think, to, to field those questions. And, and I think that that philosophy translates to to agents who do a lot of social media stuff as well is right now we need to be talking about the implications of this not trying to rush people into the market and tell them that it's a good time to buy or trying to create opportunism or whatever i think we all need to step back and really evaluate what's what's the right thing to be doing here together right yeah totally um you touched upon uh sort of what i wanted to get into next and um, it's about like providing value. Like you mentioned, you're posting uh, content on your Instagram and just reaching out to people and just talking about the situation and just providing value from that way. Mm. Um, I think it now is a great time for, for realtors to think about providing value to their, their audiences um, more than ever uh, right now. You know, I think now yeah. uh, it's a great time to capture people's attention as everyone is pretty much online on their phones at the same time now more than ever. And, I, and so I think that's a, um, could be a great opportunity to to think about ways to provide value and just put out content and talk about For what's sure. going on and just be a voice and just build trust with people from that sense. So on that topic, like what are your thoughts on just like the value aspect and like, how are you thinking about providing value to your audience right now, other than the, the couple of ways you mentioned, or if you want to dive into those in more detail? Yeah. I mean, I, I think it all kind of plays together. So for me, it's um, the big one is, I, I ask people what they want to know. Like, I, I think that I, for me, it's trying to be as in touch with the needs of my clientele as possible. And so that means like every day I put out a, a yes, no uh, poll on my Instagram. So like what I'll do is I'll, I'll present three topics or sorry, three points on, on one topic. So today's was like three reasons that the media will be um, a big threat to, to the real estate market during COVID as an example. And I gave, and I listed three reasons and I do little 15 second, like just one point super digestible content on Instagram about that. So people can click through and wake up and listen to me babble on about this stuff. And then at the end, it has a question relating to that to try and get some engagement. So they can say yes or no about like today's question was, um, do you, do you think that you can trust or do you, I don't know, do you think the media is the best source of, um, of, uh, information in regards to real estate during COVID. Um, and, uh, and it was a yes, no. And then I'll, and I'll typically follow that up with somewhere where people can kind of ask me a question um, where, which I've actually just kind of gotten rid of because it was so like, it was, it was just a huge inundation of, of content. Um, so people, but people now will just text me like a lot of people today, especially are saying, do I have to pay my rent? Right um for april 1st and so i'm have, and then and then so then tomorrow i might make it about do, do people pay their rent right um which i actually did yesterday so it doesn't but any anyway so and then it, basically what i do is i take that content i turn it I, I elaborate on it so i take those three points and i type about them in a long form blog post which i post on instagram and i post on my my web for realty site 
Um, and then the, on the site, I automatically um, through Zapier, I have it, or th sorry, through MailChimp, I have it, uh, the RSS feed automatically email out to my mailing list um, daily. So I think I got like most of the bases covered. I got like a little bit of video um, and then I'm trying to, I'm really trying to ramp up like some more of the thorough stuff that I've been dreaming about doing. And now I have the time. That's sort of what I'm doing in my afternoon time slots now you know, podcasts like this, um, just calling people who, who know more about real estate than I do and, and picking their brain on, on uh, you know, how this whole thing is going to shake out and, and what people need to be thinking about. And it seems like so far it's working all right. I think like there's a couple of people who, you know, it doesn't resonate with that have kind of unfollowed me or whatever, but that's all right. I mean, it doesn't really bother me that much. That's awesome. I, I love it. Um, just the, the consistency in what you're doing, uh, super productive and it's all about providing value right now. So I think you're, yeah. you're nailing that right on the head. Um, curious to, to hear. So actually like in your particular business, like, uh, you mentioned you're doing some cold calling. Um, yeah. what's sort of the ratio between like new business and just working on your existing contacts or, in, or sphere of influence uh, right now? Mm. Probably 50, 50. And it's, it's pretty easy to divide it. Like my listings I get from, from, um, cold prospecting or active prospecting. So cold calls because like I call with, with an objective, right. And it's like, it's for properties that I'm the best and most qualified to sell. I like, and that's hard for a lot of agents to figure out a way to carve out that a niche. Right. But it, it's like, I know that any property on the main road in, in my town, there's nobody else in my market that is as qualified to sell that property. So it's, it's easy to go in with a value proposition and, and that's why I go after those properties primarily. Um, and, and I don't, I'm not going to find those people on social media in most cases. Um, it, you know, like now a lot of those properties are, um, did you, did you lose me? Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I we're all good. Yeah. Just, uh, all good. Um, but yeah, so a lot of those properties are occupied by like older people who, who when they moved into town, that street wasn't even busy, right? Young people aren't buying these houses, but a lot of my investors are. So, so, um, and young people are the ones that I'm accessing on, on social media as well as in, investors now who, who follow me and come to my events and, and stuff like that. Um, kind of just want to learn the systems that I'm running. Um, so it's kind of like, I would say the active side is mostly listings. And then the, the um, social media really just brings in buyers, people who, who want to work with somebody with my knowledge. And I'm just, that's what it is, right? I'm just trying to add as much value as I can, demonstrate what, what I'm doing, why I know what I'm talking about. Like just really, and this is a unique opportunity to do that now because there's so much attention on social media. Um, I'm just trying to, sorry, I knocked my phone off there. I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to, to figure out as many creative ways to, uh, to do that. And, and that's sort of the adventure. Like, you know, there's a couple of things that I have in the works right now. I, I was doing like some drawings on site plans in the past, showing people how to develop property. Like there's a lot of just really, really cool ways. And I think people just need to be, a, a lot of agents don't take the time to step back and be like, what am I good at? Right. Once you've done that, then you can say, okay, how do I, then you work backwards from that. How do I communicate? what I'm good at. Yeah, totally. Um, and, yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Um, you know, this, this is obviously going to settle and just be put behind us. Right. Um, yeah. we're all definitely hoping sooner than later, of course, but time will tell. Um, but curious to hear your thoughts on like how specifically the Toronto market or the GTA market will bounce back from this. Um, again, especially as this all happened during one of the hottest periods of all time, like, what's your take on that? Um, I think it's, a, I honestly really, really, and it sounds like a cop-out answer, but I really think it depends and it depends on a couple of variables. The big one would be whether or not we see a full shutdown, um, or lockdown. If we do, then, you know, there's not even going to be space in the market for opportunism, um, because you won't be able to sell properties unless people are buying them sight unseen, which might happen. I mean, there's, there's enough appetite for Toronto real estate that, I mean, we're hearing about it all the time anyway. Um, so but I think that you're probably going to see, I think that the, the, you know, UBS kind of put us in bubble territory, let's say two years ago, like 2017, sort of when we, when we came out of that, that hit pretty quickly, um, it started to look a little shaky. I think that there's some froth on top of the market right now. And I think a lot of that's going to get shaved off. Um, and, and I, I won't, 
I won't be specific, too specific because like, it, you know, I don't want to scare people, but I think that, um, you know, over pay, paying higher than what the market is like, if you're buying a, a condo pre-construction and there's a, a building next door, you know, and that now your building's supposed to be um, closing that, you know, within a year or next year, I think you might, I don't think you're going to still see that premium um, that had been priced in. Um, I, I think that there, so I think that that's a, a pretty big risk. And then I think that a lot of the toxic assets like or, or negative assets that, you know, there's a lot of guys buying, we sort of saw de detachment from fundamentals, right? Like, and, and you see it in the U S stock market. So it's just that, like that money that people just really are, are eager to get into the market. And they, as a result, they aren't, um, really operating on, on actual investment principles. So people buying condos that don't make money or not, not just condos, I shouldn't nitpick or, or be, or pick on just condos, but, uh, people buying assets that, that don't make money, um, or don't, aren't, aren't cash positive. Um, there, that becomes a lot more difficult to hold when you're not getting rent. And I know the federal government did just, um, release the, the sort of helicopter money policy, um, that uh, basically that they'll be giving people, I think, 2000 a month. Um, so hopefully that will offset this whole war that's been created between landlords and tenants by the media. I'm not sure if you saw that graffiti on the gardener, but I went out and photographed. I did, but, yeah. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I, that, that, that's a big vulnerability from my perspective as well. Like I think the, the ghost hotels are going, like they're gone. Like you can see a lot of these Airbnbs already hitting the market. Um, and then I think a lot of these, the bad assets are going to, going to follow them. And I think hopefully we don't see a race to the bottom scenario. I, I honestly don't think we will, but I think we will see a little bit of a, a very short correction. Once things kind of get below a certain point, you'll see, um, like, and it could, it could be as small as like two or 5%, right? Like, I don't think it, and then what, but once you see prices kind of reduce, you're going to get a lot of that opportunist purchasing where buyers are going to say, yeah, okay, this is you know, I'm willing to take the risk of leaving my house or I'm willing to take the risk of being wrong or whatever to, to get that, that little discount. I want to go out and buy these properties. I want to go out and see these properties. So I think that it'll be, you know, it'll be a pretty quick bounce, but, but I think it'll happen um, from that perspective. I'm Toronto's going to be stable. I think that kind of on a macro level, there's like a little bit of a, a vulnerability to if, you know, if, if nationally and, and um, I guess municipally, and provincially, we, if we don't handle this whole thing really well, um, you know, that might not reflect exceptionally positively from the perspective of a lot of the migrant capital that is so like really, really driving a lot of the investment in our market right now. And, and we're seeing like, I'm, I'm, I'm actively seeing that sentiment changing um, from people who have just messaged me based on some of the, the posts that I've been making on LinkedIn. Um, about how a lot of um, students are moving back to, you know, their the countries that they came from to to study. They're they're moving home um, to quarantine there rather than in Canada. So and you know, and these are countries that have already been affected. So you're starting to see like a little bit of that geopolitical stuff kind of weeding its way into. I don't. It's really impossible to predict how that's all going to play out, but I, I, I do think that there is a variable, which is how how is the government going to handle this? Um, and if they, I think if they handle it well, then then things will keep going full steam. And if they don't, you know, that could be a little bit of a, a hit in the macro environment. Yeah, no, all makes sense. I appreciate those insights for sure. Um, what's your advice to realtors right now? Who are, and there's a lot of them who are just panicking yeah. not only realtors but you know let's just talk about Everyone. realtors but yeah, yeah panicking just nervous about their business and the economy like what do you say to those people um my biggest advice would be to build a hedge to be honest with you i think it's the 25th right so it, the market's up right now um and i would be advising people to if they have cash to be putting it in an in, in inverse and I'm not obviously not a fiduciary, but I have money in, in an inverse. And basically the reason that I do that is because if the market goes down substantially, then that inverse will make me money. And if the market goes up or if the market recovers fine, I don't really need that money. So like I can, I can afford the upside risk, but I can't, I mean, I, I'll be fine with the downside risk, but I'd rather make money on the downside risk. And 
right now, from my perspective, the vulnerability is the downside risk. Um, so that's the best advice I can give, to be honest with you. And then the second best advice I could give is just focus on adding value first and, um, and do things like what you and I are doing. Show people, like use this as an opportunity to communicate to people that you do have value and that you do have the ability to think critically and that you are good at what you do. Because I think that there's, you know, there's not going to be a lot of room in the market when things come back. I don't expect that volume is going to just return to normal instantly. And I think that, it, you know, people are going to look at, at what you were doing for the past X number of days. And I think that, that that's, it's your time to shine, right? It's, you're, you can be building a pipeline without intruding on people or without being an ambulance chaser. Um, and, and the biggest way to do that right now is by creating value in people's lives, right? Totally agree. Very well said. Uh, you're right. It's truly all about uh, value right now. Um, sort of in the topic of, of this uh, discussion, which I think is amazing. Um, Daniel, I do want to be mindful of your time. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on the podcast and speaking with me. Um, I know a ton of realtors and anyone else really out there will find this extremely useful and valuable. So thank you. Yeah, no um, problem. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Can you stay safe? Wish you continued good health and I uh, hope we can do this again sometime. Likewise. Yeah. And thanks a lot for the opportunity. I really appreciate right. it. No problem. Okay. Thanks, Daniel. All the best.